Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run local databases with your AppSmith setup. There are many reasons why you would want to do this. So aside from security and ease of management, one other important reason why you would want to host a local database with your AppSmith setup is speed. The speed of your apps is going to be freaking awesome and you're just going to boost the performance of your apps by 50x. I'm not joking. Let me show you what I mean. So if you take a look at my screen right here, and um, I go open up an application here. So this is a local setup already that has a database attached to it. I'm just going to show you the gains in speed you're going to get if you go this route. So let's go edit this, for example. And this is a page that has been generated using MongoDB. So I'm going to reload this. And you can see how fast that was. This is MongoDB loading so fast within AppSmith. And this is even slow compared to what you see in Postgres. So let's go to the other page here. And this page has been generated from a Postgres DB and I'm just going to reload this for you to see. So I'm, I'm hitting the reload button and you can see that this really doesn't even load up. So this is so awesome because you can boost the performance of your applications if you have a local database set up. And it makes sense because you're going to both have AppSmith and your databases in the same machine or on the same machine. So this is one huge gain you get by going this route. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a local database with your um, self-hosted installation. Um, we'll be doing two setups. One, I'll be showing you how to set up AppSmith using MongoDB. MongoDB is the most popular NoSQL database. Then I'll also show you how to set this up using Postgres and Postgres is the most popular relational database. As we do this, I'm going to share best practices as we build this along so that um, you're able to have the most secure installation as possible. And I'll share some of these tips as we go along. Fasten your seatbelt, guys. It's going to get really fast from here on. Also, if you find value from our videos, don't forget to get subscribed and hit the like button so that we know. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. All right, so we're going to get started by making updates to our Docker Compose. Um, so for this, you have to open up your Docker Compose file and make edits and rerun the Docker Compose file. So I already have this service started, which I used to show you the demo just now. So I am going to stop it by doing a Docker Compose down. All right. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go back out and let's create a new folder with a new installation for this setup. So I'm going to be showing you everything from scratch. So I'm going to create a new folder. So let's call this um, AppSmith DBs. And here we would need to create a Docker Compose file. So I'm going to create a Docker Compose file. Um, I'm just going to co copy and paste the standard Docker Compose installation from the docs. So let's paste this in. And uh, this is your standard AppSmith installation. This does not have the auto update service in it. And you can see that we don't have any HTTPS service. And also the HTTP service has been routed from port 80 to port 8080. That is the only change you can see here. You can also follow this guide using the AppSmith Business Edition. So we are using the uh, community image, as you can see. You can do this using Business Edition. And that comes with uh, many features like SSO, um, granular access control, audit logs, and all of the good stuff that's in the Business Edition feature. But I'll be showing you this using the Community Edition, as you can see here from uh, the image. So what we're going to do now is start adding the database services. And the first one we are going to add to the list here is going to be MongoDB. So I'm just going to grab that and let us go to um, add that in here. All right. So I'm going to paste that in here. And there we have the service for MongoDB. So as you can see, we're using the latest Mongo image and we want this to always restart. And here is where we set up the environment for MongoDB. We need to pass in a text or a string for the default database username and password. That's what we need to do right here. You can go type this out um, right here. Um, so for example, you can go type this out right here and it's going to be fine, but that would not be a best practice. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that these secrets are saved in an environment variable file and read from your configuration it's more secure than having it um, typed statically here. So what we're going to do here is uh, do exactly that. So instead of typing the actual data here, we're going to read that from environment variables. So we are going to have a user variable or username variable. 
all right then we're also going to have one for password so this is going to be password all right so you can see that um if we go down this is going to run on the default mongodb port and we are actually binding it to a volume that lives on our disk so that we can have our data persisted in between restarts all right so this is it for mongodb uh, but we made a change here to set the username and password to come from environment variables we need to tell this service where to go find the environment variables and that is going to come from an env file so let's go to uh, tell it to do that to read that from an env file so i'm just going to paste that configuration here so as you can see, we have specified where the env file should be found and we provided an env um, entry into the dictionary and told it to find the env file from this folder. So let's go ahead to create that. Um, I'm going to save this right here and let's go ahead to create an env file. So this is going to be env. All right, and here I'm just going to paste the, the content of the env file. So we have a username variable, which is admin, and we have a password variable, which is going to be one to zero. So this looks good, and I'm going to save this, and let's head back to the Docker Compose file. And here we're done for the Mongo service. So we are going to repeat the same thing for the Postgres service. So I, all I need to do is just copy paste this, and we'll be good to go. By the way, all of this configuration you're seeing right here, um, I'm going to leave a link below to a place you can have access to it so that you can go copy paste it or take a closer look at what we have right here. So let's head back here, all right? And uh, I'm going to paste in the configuration for Postgres. All right, that looks good. And you can see it's virtually the same thing for Postgres. So we have the Postgres service right here on the line uh, 24. And here it's going to be using the latest Postgres image. We always want this to restart. And then for the username and password, this is going to come from the environment variable. And we have the default ports, the place where the volume should be written to. And we also have the environment variable file. So this looks good to go. And uh, we really don't need to make any changes to this. Now, the last change we need to make here to make sure everything goes smoothly is that we want to make sure that um, at the time AppSmith starts up, that's um, our AppSmith service here, which we have on line 22. Uh, this is the AppSmith service. At the time the AppSmith service starts up, we actually want to make sure we already have the database services started up. So we want MongoDB to be up. We also want Postgres to be up so that when AppSmith tries to connect to MongoDB and Postgres, we don't have a connection error because we already have the services started up. So what I'm going to do is add a line here um, in AppSmith. So let's go here to add a line. And what we want to do is create a dependency to the other services. So we have made AppSmith um, depend on MongoDB and also on Postgres. So what this means is that before AppSmith starts, Docker is going to make sure MongoDB and Postgres is started and then go ahead to start AppSmith so that it can connect to the database services, which we know would already be up by the time AppSmith is started. So that's the last change we need to make here. And I can go ahead to save this file and we can give this a go. So let's uh, save this file. All right, and we can do Docker Compose up. All right, and as you can see from the logs right here, uh, this actually did exactly what we specified. We told it to only start AppSmith after starting Postgres, as you can see, and after starting MongoDB, and lastly, AppSmith was created, which is exactly what we want. So if we go to check out what we have in the browser, so I'm going to open a new browser window and close the previous one. So this is going to be localhost port 8080, and here we have an error because the AppSmith server is still starting up. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to connect to MongoDB and Postgres and try to seed those databases with data. So let's start with Postgres. I'm just going to open up uh, MongoDB instead. All right, this is MongoDB. And here is a connection to my MongoDB Docker container. So this is going to be MongoDB, admin, then my password. Okay, I can actually go edit this. So let's edit this so that you see the whole thing. So this is MongoDB, admin, my password. And then I'm accessing it from localhost because this is an external connection to the Docker container and then the port of MongoDB. So I can go ahead to connect to this and you can see we have a connection right there. I'm going to create a database called to-dos and a collection called to-do. All right. 
and that looks good and we can go import data into this collection so let's go select a file this is the to do's.csv i don't want the id to be imported because mongodb generates its own ids um, but for everything else i think they look good um, only small change i'll make here is make sure created at is a date um, data type and the do at also has a date data type i'm going to hit import and we are good to go as you can see the next thing we're going to do is do exactly the same thing for Postgres. So I'm going to open up a client for Postgres called Postico. Um, I can't make this any bigger, so you would have to bear with me, but it's just going to be the exact same thing we have done for MongoDB. So I'm going to connect to my Postgres container. And here I'm going to create a new table called to-dos. All right. And uh, what we want to do here is create the fields for the to-dos table. So this is going to be, ID is going to be text. All right, and we can set this to no default. Then I'm going to create a new column for the status. Then we have one for the title. We have one for the description. We have one for the created at. We have one for the due at. And lastly, we'll have one for the assigned to. All right, so this looks good. Um, I'm going to save the changes and it's going to have that table created. And we can see that we have the table created right here. So let's go ahead to import the CSV file. All right, that's to do the CSV. And here is going to be ID. This is going to be status. This is going to be title. This is going to be description. And every other thing looks good. So I'm just going to fix assigned to, and that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead to import this. All right. And we have that data also in Postgres. So now if we head back to AppSmith, we should actually have AppSmith server started up. So let's uh, retry this and we actually have the server started up. So let's go ahead to create an account. So this is going to be confidence. My email ID is going to be confidence plus one at AppSmith, my password. And I'm going to retype in my super secure password. All right, uh, so let's say engineering and let's say just exploring. And we're going to leave this as default. So I'm going to go ahead to create my first app. Um, the reason why I'm having this error is because it's redirecting away from ports 8080. So I just need to have this go back to ports 8080. This is a weird cache thing that um, I have with Chrome right now. Okay, so that looks good. And here we have my first application. So what I'm going to do is create a new app. And let's go ahead to connect to MongoDB and Postgres. So this is going to be generated from the database. So I'm going to use this generate CRUD app. And let's connect to a new data source. Let's start with MongoDB. And for MongoDB, I'm just going to use the um, string connection method. So let's say URI string, yes, and paste that in. So this is going to be MongoDB admin. Then uh, my password, so that's the username admin and then my password and here i'm not accessing it using localhost um that's because appsmith is a docker container and appsmith actually knows about the mongo service so i can just access it using the service name which is much cleaner so we can go test this out and it's valid so i'm i'm going to go ahead to save this and we are going to take a look at data from the to-do collection and we want it to be searchable by assigned to so i can go ahead to generate this page all right, and that's done. And you can see that this is really fast. So I'm reloading the data coming from the database and this is blazing fast. I can go to the next page that was really fast. I can go back to the first page, which is really fast and I can keep reloading this to show you how fast it is. So let's go on to create one more page and this is going to be for Postgres, all right? Um, so this is going to be connect to a data source. We're going to use Postgres. And here, I'm just going to call the host Postgres, which is the name of the service in the Docker Compose file. All right, so that's Postgres for the port. This is 5432 uh, for authentication. Username is admin and password is 12012. All right, so I can test this. Looks good. Go ahead to save this. Uh, let's go to the to-dos database and we want this to be searchable by assigned to. So I'm going to go ahead to generate the page and this is done generating. All right. And we can see that this is also really fast. This is 
also really fast, really, really fast. And we can see navigation um, when it comes to pagination is also very fast. So this is how easy it is to um, host a local database with your app smith setup and if you do it this way you can actually get to use as much of the uh, resources on the machine where you have app smith because you're going to have everything in one place and you're going to have everything optimized for peak performance all right so that's all for today's video don't forget to get subscribed if you love to learn more we made a video here on how to connect to services on AppSmith running on localhost. That's you have an AppSmith Docker instance and you want to connect other services on localhost. We made a video right here to show you how to do that. We also made a video here on how to set up the email service for a self-hosted installation of AppSmith. So go check that out if you want to have email service for your installation. All right, so that's all for today's video. Don't forget to get subscribed and I'm going to see you in the next video. All right, take care, bye-bye.